Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. If you haven't yet subscribed yet, please hit subscribe now. I would really appreciate that. In today's video, we're going to be looking at Twitter, monetization and growth. So where is Twitter going from here? And how do you as a user benefit from them rediscovering themselves and trying to grow their company's revenue? So that's what we're going to look at today. So let's get straight into it. Now, Twitter was founded in 2006 and has 6,100 employers, employees, sorry. And they are found in 35 offices around the world. Now, I'm not going to go through all the leadership members involved in the company, but the CEO is Jack Dorsey, and he has been at the helm of this ship since 2015, if I'm not mistaken. And he's been the one that has been making most of the decisions with his management team. So let's see how this transpires into their, into their financials and the economics behind the company and how we can exploit that. Now in 2020, Twitter didn't do as well as they would have liked. Obviously, I'm sure a lot of companies are like that too, or were like that too. And when the pandemic hit, a lot of people cut their budgets immediately and other businesses would have done the same. And one of their non-core expenses would have probably been advertising. So instead of spending so much money on an, an X amount of money on advertising, they would have cut back on advertising, which would have negatively affect the income of Twitter. Because Twitter is solely reliant well, a large percentage of their income is reliant on ad revenue. So this is why they are needing to pivot and trying to use their users and trying to allow people to monetize their, their, their user profiles within Twitter to generate an extra income source for Twitter themselves. So you'll see that in quarter one of 2020, that there was only 166 daily users, 166 million daily users on Twitter, 33 million from United States and 133 million from in the international markets. Now, fast forward one year later, quarter one to 2021, and we have 199 million daily active users. So that's quite a significant jump and it is beneficial for Twitter. But like I said, user growth doesn't equate to more income. Now, there, there's been this, this disconnect and this dislocation between um, revenue, revenue earned from ads and, and user growth. So the user growth doesn't automatically equate to more income because a lot of people have been cutting, a lot of businesses have been cutting down on expenditure and, and ads. So that's where that disconnect comes. And this is why Twitter has to focus on alternative sources of income. But there's one thing I would like to highlight is that the monetizable daily active usage worldwide has been growing since 2018. You'll see that we have 126 million daily users, 2018, 2019, we have 152, 2020, we have 192 and quarter one, we have now 199 million. So year on year percentage increase has been constant. It's been all right, 9%, 21%, 27%, and quarter one, 2021, 20%. So Twitter is growing their user base, but their revenue isn't growing in line with that. And that's why they're looking for alternative ways to make money. Now we'll get to how we benefit from that shortly. I just want to highlight some key metrics and just to point out where Twitter is going and, and how, how it translates to their, their balance sheet and income statement. Now this is quarter, quarter one and from 2020 and quarter one from 2021, just a comparison between the two. You'll see that the total revenue for quarter 21 quarter one 2021 was just over a billion rand, sorry, not rand, dollars, a billion dollars. And that is probably 
I think that is about a 26 or 27 percent increase. Quarter one from 2020, they had 808 million dollars in revenue, and quarter one 2021 just over a billion US dollars. So they've seen a slight recovery in 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 revenue. That's because ad expenditure is probably probably picking up. Economies are starting to open. Businesses are spending more again. So you can see how that translates to increased revenue for Twitter. And at that same, like I just explained, that same increase in average monetizable daily users is also increased globally as well as within the US. Now let's have a look at some of the 2021 highlights from quarter one. So it was a 28% year on year increase, one point just over a billion dollars. It's reflecting stre strength in the brand's advertising. So people are, are looking to spend money through ads again through Twitter. And operating margin of 5% reflects ongoing investments across top objectives. So Twitter is consistently investing their money back into the business, making investments, whether it pays off in the long run is unseen at the moment, but it seems like management has a layout or a plan of how they plan to execute it, increase revenue, and they are testing new products out. And if they obviously are successful, then they will roll those products out to a wider audience. Again, average monetizable users is up by 20%. And you'll see that they've also increased their earnings per share compared to last year. I think at the end of 2020, they were actually, they lost money for 2020, a billion rand that year, billion dollars, sorry, billion dollars that year. And it was probably, I think, a dollar 34 loss per share, which was obviously negatively affected by their, their revenue coming in from their ads. Now, just some more highlights. Just again, you'll see their revenue. You'll see their net income between quarter one 2020 and quarter one 2021. You'll see that they were negative and now they are positive. They've increased it. And that's obviously because of more revenue coming in from ads. There's more appetite for advertising again. And maybe businesses aren't so nervous anymore about COVID. So they are picking up their spending. Their net cash flow from operations have also increased from quarter over quarter, and their adjusted free cash flow is also increasing. So remember, it is starting from a lower base. We'll, we can compare the numbers again for quarter two. I think they will be releasing quarter two data shortly over the coming days or weeks. And we will see how they are growing and we'll have a better picture to compare these growth metrics to each other. Now you'll see that the cost of revenue has also been increasing. So Twitter is increasing their cost. They are, they are spending money to try and make more money, whether it's in research and development, sales and marketing, or just in salaries, all those sectors or all those subsectors within the, in the revenue sector is all increasing. So they are looking to make investments and that's obviously driving up costs for their business as well as their group. So you can read here, it says expenses, total costs and expenses, including cost of revenue and all operating expenses grew to 984 million US dollars in quarter one. So you'll see in quarter one of 2020, it was 815 million. So their total cost and expenses has almost grown to a billion US dollars. So they state here that expense growth was 21% driven by higher sales related to expenses, headcount growth and infrastructure costs. So Twitter is employing more people and they are investing in the infrastructure of, of Twitter, of their data. Um, you'll, have to find, you'll have to dig deeper to find out what exactly they are investing in, but infrastructure costs, hiring more employees, 
and just general higher expenses, which is why that expense is rising. Now, whether that equates to higher profits because where they are investing that capital or if it pays off in, in their headcounts, maybe they have engineers working for them and they might develop new products, might code better products, more could be friendly, more compatible friendly, the, the, the platform. So there's lots of development tools and, and infrastructure that they will invest across. So you'll see how this translates. Cost of revenue grew 34% to 381 million. So cost of revenue, revenue quarter one was 284 million. It's now 381 million. Driven by public cloud related expenses, traffic acquisition costs and revenue share expenses. So it's, it's telling you where they're spending that money, traffic acquisition, trying to get more people to come to their platforms and revenue share expenses. So research and development expenses grew 25% to 251 million. So it went up from 200 million to 251 million. We just rounded up here. Primarily due to higher personnel related costs as we continue to focus investments in engineering, product design and research. So just like I said, they are investing in different products that can enhance the platform, engineering costs, the design of these products, all this equates to higher prices. So they are reinvesting back into the business. And this is not necessarily a bad thing. It just depends on where they are spending that money and if there's a return on the investment, which we will see as time moves on. Sales and marketing expenses grew by 6% to 235 million primarily due to higher personnel related costs and sales related expenses due to higher revenue, partially offset by lower travel expenses. All right, so it's just sales and marketing where they've spent the money and where they are investing it. General and administrative expenses grew 7% to 118 million, primarily due to higher personnel related costs and professional fees, partially offset by decreased supporting overhead expenses. So general administrative costs are usually salaries. So maybe they hired more people, which they did, and that pushes up the expense on salaries. Now, whether what effect that person has on the business, we don't know. Maybe they bring in value, they bring in ideas. That in the long run will pay off. Otherwise, they will reduce their headcount as time goes on. But it seems like Twitter is looking to expand their business, uh, invest in new infrastructure, develop new products, just to grow the overall revenue of the business. That is why the cost of revenue is going up because they are investing more and we'll see what their return is next quarter, next financial year. All right, so this is the assets and liabilities. We'll see that their current assets has jumped quite significantly up to almost 9 billion US dollars. So it, it's gone up by $1.2 billion from December 31, 2020. So in the quarter, they've, they've grown their current assets quite a bit. Property and equipment, we'll see they have 1.6 billion. Goodwill, 1.3 billion. Deferred taxes, 933 million. Other assets could be investments or things like that. Total assets, one, sorry, uh, 14 billion, 984 million. So they've grown their total asset base, obviously, because they're reinvesting, they're buying things. And I'm sure that's probably also equated to higher liabilities, which we'll see now. So current liabilities, total liabilities we'll see at the bottom here has gone from 5 billion to 7.2 billion. So you'll see that they have more than enough assets to cover all their liabilities by almost double. So if they had to run into trouble, they could always sell some assets to pay off their liabilities and still have 7 billion in cash. So there is equity within the business, which is a good thing which is always what I look for. 
have got cash on hand, uh, actually quite a bit. If you take their current assets, which is total current assets, which is 9 billion. I'm just going to round it up and say nine, 10 billion. So we'll just say 10 billion. And you can divide that by current liabilities current liabilities, which are, yeah, total current liabilities by 2 billion. So you can just divide 10 by two and you get, a, you get five. So they almost have five times enough cash as working capital to see them through. So they won't need to take on any debt if they run into trouble. If they decide to take on in debt, it's, it's specifically for investment. So that is a good thing because they could use the debt to invest, low interest rates to invest in something that could produce a higher return for them. So there's no structural decay within the business. The only thing that's been affected is their revenue over time because of COVID. And obviously the, the ad expenditure that other companies are spending, that has affected their revenue. This is why they are looking, to, looking for other avenues to generate income. So management is cognizant of the fact that they can't be reliant on just re ad revenue. They've got to look for alternative ways to bring money into the business. Now, this will bring me to my next point shortly. How do you monetize your own account on Twitter? So before we get there, I just want to go through some other important things. Capital expenditure. So that's them spending their business's money totaled $179 million, which compared to last year was only $121 million. So they are spending more now than what they were. And that's driven by infrastructure investments in data center build outs to support audience growth and product innovation. So that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to grow their user base and to create products that their users are going to want to use. Now that's important, especially if they're going to try and monetize those products with their user base. Why will their users pay for something if the product is inferior? So they are spending money on that to ensure that they can actually monetize from us, the user. And then there's also just one thing I want to point out. It says we bought back a total of 162 million of stock during quarter one by our share repurchase program announced last year, bringing our total purchase repurchase to 412 million to date. Our pace in the future quarters may, be, may vary based on the operating environment, our capital needs and market conditions. Now buying back stock is a positive, but it can also be a negative. So it can deceive you if you buy back stock, it can artificially put, push up your earnings per share. So you'll see in quarter one that the earnings per share went up. Now that could be deceive, could deceive you because they've been buying back their shares. So something to look out for. And also, is it a good, is it good um, allocation of their capital? by buying back shares. If they buy their shares back at an overvalued price, then it's not, not good management. They're not spending their money wisely. Now, I don't know the intrinsic value of Twitter. You could work it out by taking the net income and working out the free cash flow, giving a discount rate, and then working out your numbers from there. And you might give yourself a certain number, safety of margin, and you might get say $42, for example, right? Now, if the share price is at $68 and Twitter is rebuying their shares, then they are overpaying for what the company's worth. And that would be bad management by buying shares that are overvalued. Whereas they could be investing that money into product development, which could yield a greater return. So that's something to look out for. And it could negatively affect where they are spending their money over the, over the long term. Now, I want to just talk about what I mentioned earlier, how you as a user can monetize this. Now, Twitter has rolled out one of their latest features called Twitter Spaces, and they are planning to allow you to sell tickets for your Twitter Spaces. So you can have workshops, you can have 
premium content that you you could talk about. Uh, maybe you have mentoring programs where people buy your tickets and you come, they come there and you mentor them online. So they are looking for these innovative ways to generate income. So if I hold, hold a space and I decide to sell tickets and people actually do buy the tickets because maybe they are intrigued and that will equate to profits for me, right? But that Twitter will also take a percentage of that income from me. So that inevitably boosts up their own income and it's an additional stream of income other than ad revenue. So that might also boost more ad revenue because maybe people will want to advertise on Twitter spaces because a certain high profile account might be hosting a Twitter space and an, another business might want them to advertise their products through that space. So that is generally, a, a it's a good move. Whether it's going to work, I don't know. If you are a Twitter user, would you be willing to spend money on a ticket to listen in on somebody that you think can give you advice? For me, it, it's 50-50 depends. Uh, I know I would want to sell tickets, of course. So that is an attractive way to monitor, monetize my account if I could do that. But other than that, if you are using Twitter for consumption rather than creation, then you're missing out on, on its true potential. It, it, it's, a, it's a dormant gold mine. And I think a lot of people know that because it has potential to grow. Twitter itself and also you as an individual that you, you that participates in the ecosystem. Now you could benefit from affiliate marketing, uh, selling your own products, writing other people's tweets, promoting tweets. Um, yeah, so many things that you, you could benefit from. And that's the beauty about Twitter. So you can actually generate income from yourself and as Twitter rolls out more features and, and looks for these innovative ways to generate more income from their business, you as the user, us, we have the potential to grab some of that money along the way too. Now, you can invest in the stock, but like I said, they, you have to find out what the intrinsic value is of that stock because you're going to pay, there's a difference between price and value. And price is what you pay, value is what you get. Now, the intrinsic value, like I said earlier, might be 42. And if you are like Twitter, who's rebuying their stock at 62, for the next year, you might have unrealized gains of X amount, 20%, 30%, whatever it is. But in the long term, if Twitter is successful and actually does grow their user base, does grow their revenue, features become sought out and they actually rediscover themselves and become a very successful uh, social media platform and business, then you as a stockholder is going to benefit in the long run too. Whether you buy in at 62 and they do actually succeed, the price is really irrelevant, especially if you're going to use it long term and add more to it over time, then you can just dollar cost average in and if you have the conviction to actually believe in management and where they're going to steer the ship, then it's definitely a potential play to make. But right now, I've got the stock on my watch list. I am interested to see where management steers the ship. For now, I'll be watching from the outside. But at a given time, I might put my, at any given time, I might put my feet in the water. So I just wanted to share that information with you tell you the different ways that you are able to monetize your account, how you can benefit from the business growing, and overall, how you can actually earn some income from, from, from this, this price discovery of where management is planning to take the company. So I just want to thank you. I hope you took some, I hope you, you got some knowledge from this video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. And then I will see you next week for the next video. So from me, bye-bye.